Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. Now for today's video, as you already know by reading the title, we will be charging fire orbs. Now this is actually going to be similar to charging water orbs. They are very close together, the fire obelisk and the water obelisk. The fire obelisk is actually a bit closer, so we might be able to get uh, an extra inventory or two of uh, fire orbs over the water orbs, so we'll see. As for the gear setup for this moneymaker, you want to make sure that you bring any weight reducing clothing since we are going to be doing a lot of running. Bring an anti-dragon shield to protect against the dragons that are down in the dungeon. And of course bring a fire staff of any kind or you know of course any staff that just gives you infinite fire runes. Uh, you could also bring a tome of fire for the fire runes and then bring some sort of water staff for the Falador teleports. But just keep in mind that without the anti-dragon shield you will be taking damage from the dragons fairly often. And they do hit kind of hard so if you don't have that at least make sure that you have protect from mage. As for the cape, we're just bringing our max cape, but the graceful cape will do as well. And that is pretty much it for this uh, gear setup. In the inventory, you can see that we have our cosmic runes to cast the spell that we are going to be using. And then, of course, whenever we get to the bank, we'll withdraw a full inventory of the uncharged orbs. Now, as for the method, we are going to be using our POH. So we're going to be teleporting with our max cape to come to our house. And we are going to configure our teleporter to take us directly to Falador. So we'll just left click on this and we are back in Falador where we need to be. So from here, we will run to the bank, deposit our fire orbs and then get a new inventory of uncharged orbs and then repeat the process. Also, make sure that you have antidotes in your bank. There are spiders in the dungeon and if they bite you, it is kind of annoying because the poison damage that you take every 10 to 15 seconds will cause you to have to click on the obelisk again to start the process of charging orbs. So um, yeah, make sure you have those. Also, if you're not using the POH and you don't have an ornate rejuvenation pool to restore your stamina every time you teleport back, uh, you might also want to have some stamina potions in your bank. That way you can sip one before you make the long trek to the obelisk. And speaking of stamina, I wanted to make sure that whenever I hit my POH that I had at least 60 energy. In this gear setup, 60 energy would ensure that I could make it all the way to the obelisk without having to walk. So anytime I made it to my POH without 60 energy at least, I would hit the ornate rejuvenation pool and that would ensure that I could run the entire hour. Of course this might be different for you depending on how heavy you are with your weight reducing gear and what your agility level is, so just find out what works for you and um, follow that. Now, as you saw earlier in the video, some of the requirements for this moneymaker is, of course, 63 magic, 70 to 80 agility, and a decent defense level. Now, the defense level is for the various monsters you'll encounter here in the dungeon. You do have to run past some poisonous spiders, which is why we mentioned the antidote earlier. And, of course, you have to make it past the black dragons, which can hit fairly hard. Now, as for the agility levels, these aren't really needed but they greatly help the GP per hour. Besides helping with your stamina, they unlock some pretty massive shortcuts in this dungeon. 70 agility is required if you don't want to use the dusty key, and it does speed up this moneymaker by a good bit. And then if you have 80 agility, that unlocks an even better shortcut, which is the one that we are using. And as you can see, we get to skip a pretty large part of the dungeon by using that. So like I said, you can do this moneymaker without those agility levels, but you won't be making nearly as much since the run to the obelisk is going to be a lot further. And that is pretty much it for the requirements aside from the gear setup. Once again, if you want to go to the wiki or even the beginning of this video, um, it does show what items to bring. There are some different combinations you can do if you do decide to bring a Tome of Fire. So go ahead and check that out and see what works for you. But once again, if you do bring a Tome of Fire, at least make sure that you have the Prayer Protect from Magic because these dragons will hit hard with their Dragon Breath. Anti-Fire Potions will also work. I know earlier in the video I said that the Fire Obelisk was actually closer than the Water Obelisk, but in my head, I kind of forgot where the Fire Obelisk and Water Obelisk were. It, I was under the impression that 
Um, the ladder to go up to the water obelisk was right next to the fire one, but it's actually to the right of it. So they might actually be the same distance. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it had been a while since I'd been down here. So yeah. All I know is that when I went to go review my older video on charging water orbs that I made like over a year ago, I found out that we actually made the same amount of orbs in the one hour. So I guess they're the same. I gotta say, I do like how the fire obelisk and the water obelisk are right next to each other. It's kind of like a whole yin and yang thing. And funnily enough, the air and earth obelisk are also close to each other. Uh, today, I actually found out where the earth obelisk was because I had never used it or e even tried to look it up. But it turns out that it's right next to the air obelisk as well, and it's in the same setup. The earth obelisk is underground, and the air is right above it with a ladder nearby. So that's pretty cool. After this video is done, the Earth Obelisk is the last one that we have to do. We've done all other orbs, so uh, yeah, I guess expect to see that in the future. It does feel pretty good to be back in the members worlds for a while. The last few videos have been all in free to play, but I decided that it was time to go back to members and try a moneymaker that's going to give us a bit more money. And I definitely got a lot more than I expected. So let's go ahead and jump into the price check and see how much money we got from this one hour of charging fire orbs. Alrighty, so after one hour of charging these fire orbs, we are left with 540. Let's go ahead and do a price check on those. Looks like it is 962,000 GP, almost a mil. Definitely a lot more than what I was expecting. Let's go ahead and sell them off since we're already here at the Grand Exchange. So as we can see, the actively traded price is higher than what the market price is, which is always a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there for $18.50 to see if they sell. And if not, then we'll just sell them for market price. And they instantly sold, and we got a lot more than what we expected. Um, yeah, was only expecting $9.89, but we actually got over a mil. So yeah, I would say that this moneymaker is definitely a good one to try out right now. Very nice. So now that we've sold off the fire orb, let's go ahead and calculate the total profit we got from this one hour. So if we calculate the total cost of supplies, which was the antidotes, the cosmic runes, and the orbs, we spent 54,280 GP. Subtract that from the money we made, which was 1,042,740 GP. That gives us a grand total profit of 988,460 GP. So almost a mil an hour doing this moneymaker. Not bad at all. Definitely more than what I expected. The GE or the wiki actually said it was 600k, but once again, these prices are always changing and we did get lucky with the actively traded price being higher than the market price. So just make sure you do a price check before you attempt a moneymaker like this. But other than that, this is a really good moneymaker. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video and thank you to all of my channel members with a special thanks to ACR Beans and Chris. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next episode.